A major university is an incredible place of learning, creativity, and accomplishment. As president of Oklahoma State University, I have the opportunity to explore and experience what makes our campuses unique. I'm Burns Sargas. Come along with me, and together, let's go inside OSU. With 24 departments, the College of Arts and Sciences is the most academically diverse college on the Oklahoma State University campus. Math, English, and science are all housed in Arts and Sciences, making it the one college with required classes for all undergraduate students. Leading this complex operation is Dr. Glenn Krutz, who was appointed Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences last year. We talked to Dean Krutz about his vision for the Arts and Sciences College and the college's wide range of academic departments. The Dean's position is one that has a lot of variety. Um, I, I enjoy having the three, the three pillars of, of the College of Arts and Sciences. So we have the Arts and Humanities, we have the Social Sciences, and then we have the Natural Sciences. So there's something, something new every day. Uh, and, and Dean's Deans are like uh, little CEOs of their neighborhood, so to speak, at, at OSU. And so the variety of things I work with every day is, is really enjoyable. It can be budgeting, it can be personnel, uh, strategic planning, fundraising, Go you name it. Dance to microbiology. That's right, absolutely. Uh, well, give us a little bit of your background. I know you're native of Nevada. And Reno Lake Tahoe area to be specific. Um, and I'm a land grant kid. I, took my degrees, my bachelor's and my master's at Nevada's land grant institution, the University of Nevada, Reno. And then I got my PhD at Texas A&M. Um, in what discipline? In political science, right. So I'm a political scientist, that's my disciplinary background. So I'm, I'm, I'm among the social scientists in the college. Um, and before I became a, a professor and pursued my PhD, I worked in politics and policy. So I had some real, wor real world experience Worked on a couple campaigns, worked in the U.S. Senate in Washington, and finally I worked for the, the Chancellor and State Board of Regents in Nevada. Um, and so that, the real world experience that I, that I obtained really comes through in my teaching, it comes through in my orientation on research. I like research to be cutting edge, but also to be applicable to what society needs. And that jives pretty well with the land grant tradition. We're here in a very beautiful and new asset here at Oklahoma State University, the Greenwood School of Music Recital Hall here in the McKnight Center for the Performing Arts. Uh, and as you said, one of the pillars of your college is the arts and the visual and the, and the, uh, the musical and all the different aspects of, of art. How important is that to the college and to the university in your view? Oh, absolutely, absolutely critical. The, the arts and humanities, and specifically the performing arts that the McKnight Center and soon the Greenwood School of Music are elevating help, help all students. Uh, so that can improve the cultural environment at OSU in terms of programming offerings. It's certainly going to improve the gen ed classes we offer. All, all OSU students take our classes, um, including in the arts and humanities. And so there's a, there's a trickle you down offer effect. you the core, basically. That's right, yeah, we, we really are uh, in, in the arts and sciences. We're the, we're the core of OSU, the intellectual core. And the, the depth we provide across the three, three pillars of the arts and humanities, the social sciences, and the sciences really give all students a, a degree of depth and an opportunity to, to really fulfill themselves. And facilities like the McKnight Center and the Greenwood School of Music um, literally and figuratively break new ground. Uh, they, they create excitement, they create opportunities for all students, for alumni, for the faculty, and then directly they impact majors in those areas. Take us through the arts departments that you, what all is under sure, arts? Sure, absolutely, there's a lot. So you have under the arts and humanities, you have the Greenwood School of Music, you have the Department of Theater, you have the Department of Art, Graphic Design and Art History, uh, we have the Department of History, Department of Philosophy, uh, really, there are critical thinkers. Why are we here? What do we do? What should we do? We have the Department of English, uh, which provides English comp courses to all students at OSU, such an important part of the freshman experience. We have the Department of Languages and Literatures. Uh, we provide uh, many languages here um, at Oklahoma State University. And those are popular classes for students to take across many of the colleges. Um, we have several cross-disciplinary programs 
as well, including American Indian studies, women's and gender studies. Um, we have Africana studies, and then we have American studies. And those cross-disciplinary programs lead to either a minor or a major. There is a, uh, oh, a trend around these days that uh, degrees ought to be in things like engineering or in business or some, somewhere where you're sure to get a really good job, kind of look, and they look uh, askance, frankly, at a lot of the arts programs as, and probably even the, some of the social sciences. Um, what do you think about all that? If you, you're looking well, at your, your child and they're going to major in something and they say, well, I want to major in art history. Sure, absolutely. Um, I understand. I understand that concern and that interest. Uh, it's a very utilitarian approach, uh, the idea that universities are going to provide sort of trade training and then you go get a job. Uh, and that's part of what we do is, is help people realize what their skills are and improve their skills. But there's something about the university education that's deeper than that. And that's passion. And so it's, it's, I think it's arguably most important for a student to find their passion in a subject they like. So let's say they're pushed into engineering but don't have a passion for it. It's not their thing. Do they falter there or do they move over to English um, where they finally tell their parents or their high school teacher, whomever convinced them to pick engineering, that they love to read. They love to read fantasy novels and they wanna, wanna write them. Uh, let's, let's guide students towards their passion. They're more likely to persist and graduate from Oklahoma State University. And then I would just point to the data. The jobs data don't back up that argument. Um, for example, philosophy majors do very well in the job market. They make really good salaries, better than many of the disciplines in business. Uh, and Especially folks are after aware a of that. few years, if you look That's at right. it after 10 or 15 years. That's right, so you have um, opportunities there for people to learn critical thinking skills, those soft skills that employers want that you maybe don't learn if you're simply taking a degree of study with a job in mind. Through the three pillars Dean Kreutz mentioned, the College of Arts and Sciences offers more than 100 majors. That's nearly a third of the majors offered on the OSU campus. Many of these are within the science pillar which includes the departments of chemistry, computer science, geology, integrative biology, mathematics, microbiology, molecular genetics, physics, plant biology, ecology and evolution, and statistics. Well, Dean uh, Kreutz and I are here at the uh, Core Research Lab, uh, which is another important facility in arts and sciences. Before we talked about your vision for the arts pillar in the uh, College of Arts and Sciences, right. what's your vision for the science uh, pillar? My vision for the sciences pillar is to have a research enterprise that's very cutting edge and very real world oriented. In order to do high quality real world research, you have to have two things. Number one, you have to have good personnel. And secondly, you have to have good facilities. Well, I'm here with Mike Grammer, who's uh, head of the Gary F. Stewart Core Research Lab. And tell us what goes on in here. In this building are teaching cores, our research cores. Core is like taking a straw down through the rock, but it may be three miles down, and pulling the rock up. And that's what you're looking at in all these boxes here. So they come up in four inch diameter cores like this that may be 100 feet long. We're looking for holes in the rocks and how the holes are connected. More often than not, they're smaller holes like this. And as we move into the unconventional reservoirs that we're hearing about now, about horizontal drilling, the horizontal drilling, there's pores in the rocks, but instead of being centimeter scale, they're nanometer, which is 10 to the minus ninth meters. Yeah. And so you x-ray these to see what, we, what it looks like inside? We, we actually do. We uh, geologists started using CT scans, just like you have on your knee or whatever, a number of years ago, and now we're using micro CT. So there's a lot of analytical stuff that goes into trying to figure out you know, what, what the porosity and permeability of the storage and the connectivity um, for fluids in the subsurface. And we're talking oil and gas or water. And then what are some of the other applications you can learn from this, these core samples? Well, the, the, the work we do is a combination. A lot of it's oil and gas, um, but we also do groundwater analysis, so figuring out where uh, where the best groundwater aquifers are, um, how they'd produce, these kind of things. But from a fundamental science standpoint, just understanding how the rocks formed, uh, this particular core here formed uh, about 370 million years ago when this area was just like the Bahamas. 
So where do these core samples come from? About 90% of our teaching and research collection here is from the state of Oklahoma. How would you uh, rate this, this facility now in terms of uh, the disciplines that you work in? Uh, it's, it's an outstanding resource for us, um, both from a teaching and, and research, research perspective. Um, it gives us a nice, very professional looking facility uh, where we can bring in industry for short courses, um, as well as uh, actually do the majority of the kind of work that we've been talking about today uh, in this facility. Well, Dr. Grammer, I know that when you do research, you want to find what you're looking for, but there's times you find something else, isn't it? Oh, yes. Uh, most, most of the graduate student research projects end up going off down different directions depending on, you know, what they find that works. And an example would be starting to look at rocks from uh, light microscopy under a, a microscope and then realizing that there must be holes that are smaller than that. So you take it to a scanning electron microscope and you start seeing even smaller holes and then you take it to a CT scan and you start looking at the three-dimensional aspects of it. So that would be kind of moving the research target based upon your findings. And also sometimes, you know, you don't, you don't come up with the results that you're expecting, right? But that's science, you know, we're, we're testing hypotheses. Um, but from a geological standpoint, that can be very critical to us. The third and final pillar of the College of Arts and Sciences is social sciences. This pillar includes the departments of geography, media and strategic communications, political science, psychology, sociology, and both Army and Air Force ROTC. It also includes the Department of Communication Sciences and Disorders, which is located in the basement of Murray Hall and is led by Dr. Ramesh Kaipa. Our department has been in existence since the 1970s. In fact, we owe our presence to Ms. Vivia Locke, who was the former uh, head of the Department of Theater here at OSU. She started teaching the first speech pathology course in the Department of Theater, and that's how we were born. Now, this, uh, this department it actually is available to the public. That's right. Um, outreach is one of the main focus of this department, and this is achieved through the OSU speech language hearing clinic. Um, so it has two parts. Uh, so we assess and treat uh, patients with uh, speech and language disorders such as hearing loss, stuttering, voice disorder, stroke, uh, literacy problems, and even swallowing problems. We see kids who are a month old uh, to uh, adults who are 95 years old. Tell us about some of the equipment that uh, you use. This is the audiology suite. So the audiologist is the one who performs certain hearing tests. Um, for example, the equipment here, um, what he does is he puts on these headphones and delivers some sounds to both the ears, and the patient inside the sound booth is required to push a button whenever he or she hears the sound. So based on that, the audiology can not only tell whether he or she has hearing loss, but can exactly let us know what part of the ear is affected. This is a very busy department, uh, and I know that uh, this is a special department, special area for you because your family has experienced some of this. That's right, yeah, both, both speech and, and hearing issues have been prominent in my family. My younger brother, Scott, uh, has a severe stutter. Uh, we're very proud that he's been able to, with, with therapy, over, overcome that and, and lead a, a good life. And as far as, uh, as hearing, I actually have, have hearing issues myself. Uh, uh, some of the areas of the ear that Dr. Kaipa was just talking about, I had issues, and I was one of the earlier recipients of tubes back in the in the early 1970s, and and it helped somewhat, but I had I had some significant hearing loss, and and so I remember taking a lot of tests in these types of chambers growing up, and it at times was stressful. You would kind of yeah, wonder if you could be. pass the test, and and uh, I got a, a really nice pair of hearing aids about five years ago. So, Dr. Kaipa, in addition to the general public, uh, actually our student body can take advantage of, uh, of these services. Absolutely. So, in fact, our clinic runs on um, students' clinical practicum. And uh, our graduate students, they are here all the time. They get to actually learn to assess and treat a lot of communication. And, and the students get the benefit of the service. Ab absolutely. And um, in fact, we have a couple of dog handlers who are part of Eat Pet Posse, and uh, we have started to introduce animal assisted therapy, um, and our students just love it. And also, we have partnered with the space, space and Aviation Program. They have a lot of trainee pilots who are international students. So when they are up in the flies, flying, they have to talk to the air traffic controller and there are certain communication barriers. 
So we train our students, expose them to vocabulary such as Alpha, Charlie, Tango. They in turn learn this and offer the Accent Mart services. So we are very proud that we get to be a part of their success story. And they think of us when they're flying their planes high up in the sky. Thanks to Dean Krutz, Dr. Grammer, and Dr. Kaipa for taking us inside the College of Arts and Sciences. To learn more about the departments that make up the three pillars of the college, go to cas.okstate.edu. I'm Burns Hargis. We'll see you next time on Inside OSU. To learn more about the cutting edge research, people, places, and events at Oklahoma State University, subscribe to the Inside OSU podcast.